you coming to you live from we ain't got a lot of time to be playing around today so it's Lil Burn <laughs> coming to you live from Lil Burn <laughs> Lil Burn uh, <laughs> Lil Burn Lil Burn, Lil Burn. Lil Burn. Oh, Lil Burn like Lil Wayne yep. and um, you tuning in to the Daily Bread Show notice that I said the Daily Bread Show and uh, this show is about personal finance, and what we talk about is everything related to personal finance because it's my personal belief as the host of this show that everything that we do is tied to personal finance from when you're born to when you transition, or when you expire, or when you up out of here. <laughs> However, you want to say it. From beginning to the However, you want to do it. You know, you might go out and you know, have a big, big, big going away party. Ceremony, home going service, or you can have a real, real small burnout. <laughs> Spin out. <laughs> you have a real little small, you have a real little small little cookout. So either way, <laughs> what? Either, either way, it's all tied to personal finance. It's all tied to personal finance. So what I do each and every week is. Create what we call a safe environment. A lot of people are struggling. A lot of people are, I mean, millions and millions of people are struggling. And I see it every day. I hear it every day. I'm listening to the conversations that people are having, and people are struggling. But, I mean, hands down, people are struggling. But, like anything else, people don't really want to talk about how they're struggling. Mm -hmm. Right? Because they just feel some type of, it's just, it's hard for you to say, it's kind of like having a hammer toe. <laughs> Lord. If you got a hammer toe, you can't wear sandals. So it's kind of like having a hammer toe. When you have your shoes on, you got a hammer toe. Don't nobody, Lord. Don't nobody, hammer time. Don't nobody know <laughs> that your big toe is like, it's a hammer toe. But if you, you know, you build up enough... <laughs> If you build up with them courage, just say, I don't care if I got a hammer toe, I'm wearing some flip-flops. It's summertime, we're going to the beach. And you don't want to wear your sneakers out <laughs> to, the, to, the, to the water. You put on your flip-flops, and then the first thing somebody says is when they, they see you, they look up and down. They, <laughs> they jump and say, hey, what's that? <laughs> So it's the same way. It's the same way with your personal finance. It's the same way because you can't look at a person and tell if they're struggling, right? Because everybody got they, you know, got their mask on. Everything good. We got all our cliche sayings. It's all Gucci. It's all good in the hood. You know, could, life couldn't be better. I'm living my best life. So how can you be living your best life and somebody constantly calling you? You constantly worried. You're constantly thinking. You're constantly trying to figure it out. So what we do on the Daily Bread Radio Show, not even the Daily Bread Radio Show, the Daily Bread Show. I'm breaking, I'm breaking the habit because we're doing 
we in other mediums than just radio. So it's the Daily Bread Show. So if you run into me on the street, say, hey, I saw your show. Not the radio show. I saw your show. So with that, what I'm trying to do is create a, it's a safe environment. So you can call into the show, 678-381-1973. Don't feel good to say that number. Man, it feels, oh my goodness. <laughs> Better than got there. 918-445-678. And then put in your pen. People stop calling the show. They were like, <laughs> they probably thought I was trying to get something like a like a debit card or something, man. I was like, man, I think my viewership even went down with that number. But we got our old number back. 678-381-1973. It just rolls off my tongue, right? But um, give us a call at the show. Let us know that the phone lines are working. Hey, we here to serve. And I do this each and every week, again, just to create a safe environment. So you could call into the show and say, look, man, I'm struggling. You know, I'm, I got, I'm in a little bit over my head or what's some credit tips? Because we go, it's, this, this is the Father's Day episode. Come on. Right? This is for all the fathers. All the fathers, all the daddies, all the fathers, because you know come Sunday, it ain't going to be like Mother's Day. Because nope. Mother's Day, the day Thursday, if this was Mother's Day and you call a restaurant the day, the day Thursday, and you say, hey, I want to get a, a reservation for Sunday, they'd be like, child, mm. please. <laughs> <laughs> they like, is this a prank card? Mm. <laughs> but... <laughs> But let me tell you something. You can call up until Sunday. Matter of fact, you can call them on Sunday for Father's Day. Say, look, <laughs> they're gonna say the same thing. Man, come on in here. We got <laughs> we got plenty of ribs, chicken, whatever, man, whatever. You, hey, you can bring two, you can bring 200 people with you. We don't care. We got plenty of room. It's just something about I don't know why they do fathers like that, man. Jesus we man. give us, man, we give us a bad name. Fathers, we give us a bad name, so. I don't know if you're going to get a tie or a golf club or a pair of socks, but it ain't, it is no, it's like Mother's Day at the Super Bowl and Father's Day is like first round of the playoffs. <laughs> it ain't like the regular season, it's like the first, it's like the first round of the playoffs. Like, uh, you know, I, I might watch the game. I, I mean, some people probably even forgot this. They probably forgot that it's Father's Day this weekend. Mm. So this is the Father's Day episode. So a lot of stuff that I'm going to be talking about tonight is directed to the men. I mean, we're always going to be inclusive. It's about the women, too. But for those of you that are joining for the first time, this show is about personal finance from a spiritual perspective. We do not do religion on the Daily Bread radio show. That's our disclaimer. We only do one thing, and that's God. We do God all day, all night, all day, every day. We do God because he is in what? He's in the blessing game. So I know where he brought me from. I know where he brought me from. Come on. And I got some financial challenges, so I feel like I'm, I'm certified to talk about these different issues. But the thing that happened to me as I went through my process, the first thing is you got to learn when you're going through these things, right? You can't just be going through them and then get through them and say, dang. And then go, and then next time, you know, a couple months go past, and boom, you right back in it again. Now I, I ain't gonna put, I'm not gonna put, I'm gonna change the names to protect the innocent. Mm. But what I'm about to share with you all is a true story. And I know he, my, hey, this, hey, I'm gonna just say this: somebody that's in my, in my atmosphere. Mm-mm. I said, hey man, I'll help you out. Call me, call me, man. I, this is what I do. Call me. This was one of my, man, my closest friends in life. This is what he told me. The other, I said, man, call me. I'll help you out. He said, yeah, I do need to look at my credit. And uh, I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, because I, he said, I, don't, I think the last time I looked at my credit was like uh, 2009 or 2010. I said, what? I said, are you joking? He said, yeah, no. He said, no, I'm, he said, I'm tripping, I'm tripping, I'm tripping. He said, man, it ain't. It ain't been no 10 years. He said, it's been like mm-hmm. five or six. Mm-hmm. I said, it's been five or six years since you looked at your credit. He said, ain't stopped me from doing nothing. I said, bruh. So, I know he might be on He might be on the broadcast. I said, I'm prote- I, I changed the name to protect the innocent. I didn't even say no name. But, mm-hmm. it's a lot of people like that. It's a lot of people that think 
they haven't missed out on something, and you have. That's the deception behind doing it like that. It's like it's like a bear that's hibernating, right? And it's time for the bear when the season changes. It's time for the bear to wake up. But if you if the bear remains asleep, and you want to leave him sleep, most of these people they don't want you to know this. The stuff I'm talking about on this show, these people don't want y'all to know this. Because if you found this out and you start practicing it, because it's going to take some practice, it's going to take some discipline, but if you start doing this stuff that I'm talking about and really putting it in your arsenal, your game, man, your, boy, your game will go from Toronto. <laughs> your game, <laughs> you'll go from, <laughs> that's the perfect analogy. Look, you'll go from shooting, <laughs> You would go from having a game with a shot, feet set, and stuff. Bro, you would go from shooting from behind. <laughs> you would go from shooting from behind the backboard. You would go from shooting from behind the backboard to, bro, buckets. You would be like, you would still be, man, you would still be partying today. Swish. Two days later, you would still be like, ah, ah. You would be like that as opposed to like, where my socks at? <laughs> Where my shoes? We gonna win tonight? No, brother. No, no. You, you blew it. You, you. And that's what's happening in this personal finance arena. I'm telling you, I'm watching it every single day. Every day, somebody calling me with something and saying something. And I'm like, God, boy, we need this. Boy, just do the numbers. I mean, if you do the numbers, they just astronomical. Mm -hmm. I, listen, I'm going to throw something out at y'all, right? Throw something just real quick. This is some, this is what I call some quick, some quick, dirty math, right? 50 million, it's 300 million people in the U.S., according to the last census survey. 300 million men, women, and children. Now, it's more than that because it's been a while since they've had the census. So, we're just going to say 300 million just to keep it an even number. 300 million people in the United States. Between 50 and 55 million African Americans. Mm -hmm. Now listen to these numbers. So write these numbers down. So that way we can stay on 300. So I'm writing this down for the audience because I, I know these numbers like, man, like nobody's business because this is what I do. I love doing this. And 55, say 50 to 55 million African Americans. Right? Now they say that Research says that roughly 30%. It's somewhere between 30%, and I'm going to give you a wide range. They say 30 to 50% of African Americans own a home. Mm. Right? So we're going to say homeowners. Mm -hmm. Right? So we're going to be really, really, really conservative. And say 50. We're going to be really optimistic. So. That's 25 million people, right? So 25 million people. But now I'm about to drop down. Just to show you how big this number is. The average home in the U.S. right now, the average cost to buy a house in the United States is $250,000. So you can punch that in on your phone. So do this number. I know y'all got smartphones and calculators and you know, some people can add real quick. Do this number and then call into the show when you get, because when the number pop up, it might take you a minute to count all them zeros and like, what the heck? What number is this? A hundred thousand. Not, I, I'm not even saying a million people. I'm not even saying a million. If a house costs, if a house costs, not costs, if mm -hmm. a house costs $250,000, and I didn't say 25 million, and 100,000. It's 6 million people in Atlanta. I said 100,000. If 100,000 people brought a house with $250,000, how much is that? Are you at, are you, man, this dude over here, he's surfing on the internet. You know what number that is? What, what number is that? Y'all call me on this, that's 678. I said, it's 100,000 people bought a house for $250,000. What number is that? What, what number is that? I'll get to you real quick. Hold on. You gonna give me that number, man. 
Give me, give me, give me that number, man. You got how many now? Give me a hundred thousand people bought one house at two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. See, see what kind of number that is. Now we ain't even say I ain't say a million people bought one. So I ain't gonna mess. I don't want to just really, really mess you. You know what I'm saying? Man, that's a big number, fella. What's that number? <laughs> how, many, what, how many commas? One, one. one comma right there, one, two, three. Got another comma right there. That's two commas. One, two, three. Got another comma That's right three there. That's three commas. Woo. And then what? Then you got a 25. Then you got a 25. So what's that? One, two, three commas. Yes, sir. Uh, so once you got past that third comma, that's what? That's million? 25 billion. 25 that's billion. how many? 25 billion. 25 billion with a B. Okay? So again, just dirty math. Mm. So that's a hundred thousand people. So if a million people, not twenty-five million, if a million people brought that same two hundred and fifty thousand dollar house, mm -hmm. that's two hundred. Listen to this number: two hundred and fifty billion dollars. Mm -hmm. mm. Why is that important? Why? Like you might be saying, why is that important? That's important because it shows you the magnitude of money that's in our economy just within the African American community. Mm -hmm. Now the next question on that is this. The question you have to ask yourself is this. Of that 250 billion that a million people bought a house for 250,000, how much of that is circulating? And circulating means going around and around. Mm -hmm. How much of that is circulating in the African American community? Not a lot. How much? How much? No. Hey man, I thought you was on vacation. What you doing speaking and you trolling, bro? I see, hey, you see him? Who that is? Look. Look, man, look who on there. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Happy Father's Day, boy. Where's he from? Where you from? He from Duval. <laughs> the whole crew on from Duval. There you go. Oh, sorry, Pittsburgh Steelers fan. That's all right. Hey, what, watch your mouth now. Oh, sorry behind hey, Pittsburgh hey, Steelers. Hey, hey, hey. But listen, man. Listen. How much of that money is, how much of that is circulating in our community? $250 billion. $250 billion with a B. And that's only a million people. So I ain't gonna break your calculator or your or your smartphone because if you put in twenty five million times two hundred and fifty thousand, you're gonna get a mm. astro a astronomical. <laughs> you are you gonna get a astronomical. Mm. It's too big. You start you be counting commas like, man, we got seven commas. We got, right? Why is that important? That's important because. Of this, it's Father's Day weekend. It's our weekend. So as fathers, this goes all the way back to the beginning of time. Who was the first person here? Adam or Eve? Adam. Adam, right? Adam was first. Mm -hmm. Adam was first. What did Adam have to do before before he even created Eve? What did Adam have to do? Adam had to provide provisions. He had to go find some fruit. He had to go, you know, get something to eat. He had to find a stream. He had to get some water. Mm -hmm. Because what? He was first. He was he was the what? The man. He alpha. was the he was the man. The alpha. He was the, he was the real alpha, right? That's the real alpha, right? He was the first. He was it. He was the man. Now. What does that say about Father's Day? Father's Day is about this. If you wear the title, you have to be what that title represents. Mm -hmm. If you wear the title. So if you say, I'm a father, I'm a dad, we're not going to get into that. because hey, We talked about that on Mr. Neal's show last week. So we ain't going to get into that. You deal with that. Because I don't know everybody's stuff all whatever. But if you wear the title, then you have to do what? You have to provide provision. You have to. So moving up from Adam 
when you got to the cave, man, prehistoric time, what did the cave man have to do? The, no light, living in a cave, discover fire, all of that. What did the caveman have to do? The caveman had the cave woman, right? Caveman had his club. What did he have to do? He had to go and club something somewhere. He had to go find food, provision for the family. Provision, right? No gun. He had to go knock out some or kill a, whatever they killed back in a dinosaur, whatever they was eating. He had to do it because that's the only way that he could survive. So I'm talking to the men today. It's Father's Day. Fast forward, this 2019. We have to be the head. We have to. I know all these people got all these different theories and, oh, it's a new world. It's, no, it ain't. If you are a direct descendant of the man, because there's only two species, the man and the woman, mm -hmm. right? I know we got a lot of mixing up and stuff going on, so I ain't gonna talk about that. That's another show. But the man, right? The man has to provide provision. And what's provision? Provision is food, clothing, shelter, and everything else that needs to be handled. The man got to handle it. Mm -hmm. Right? Awesome. So part of personal finance is just learning that. Learning about credit. Learning about saving. Learning about investing. Learning about debt elimination. Learn about budgets. That's provision. Now, once you get to that, right, and you say, I, I'm the man, if you the man, you wear the title, father, daddy, what, you know, pop, 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 G pop, grandpa, whatever they call you. This is, this is, this is the Father's Day edition. You have to provide provision. You have to know how credit works. You have to know how business works. You have, some people, they hit me, I, I, don't, I don't like numbers. I don't care if you don't like numbers. Mm -hmm. So what? Shut I don't up. care if you don't like numbers. Some Shut people up. don't like reading, right? Because I don't care if you don't like reading. You still, you have to learn how to do these things. These are not, these, these are what's called non-negotiables. As a man in this society. Now, if we were still living out on the land, and you decided you, even if you was living out on the land, you can look at any Western. I just look at Westerns, gun smoking all this when I was growing up. Guess what? Even on gun smoke, Marshall Dillon, somebody was, Marshall Dillon, he handled it. He was the man, mm -hmm. right? You can't be out in the wild West Western, don't have no pistol. Then you a target. You a mark. <laughs> you was a mark. <laughs> I ain't gonna say the rest, but use a mark. <laughs> use a mark. So whatever the whatever the game is, if you get down, if you dealing with Indians, what you you gotta get you a goddamn machine. Hey, bone out. You gotta you gotta. Hey, I get down. That's just what it is. So this thing about personal finance, people say I don't like that. I don't want to read. I don't want to learn. No, I don't need to know my credit. And like my partner told me, he said I ain't miss nothing. I ain't miss nothing. That's a bear that's sleeping, that's hibernating. If you sleep long enough, right? Here's another metaphor. If you get in the bed and go to sleep, and you miss the end of the game, and the next day somebody's talking about what happened in the game, right? Did you miss it? Did you miss it? Yeah, you missed it. Even if you say, I ain't miss nothing. I don't care about no basketball. Okay, that's fine. But guess what? You missed nothing. It. You missed it. You missed it. So stop making the excuses. Stop saying, you know, crazy talk. I ain't missed nothing. Yeah, you did it. You missed it. You missed it. So happy Father's Day to all the brothers out there. Happy Father's Day to your fathers, if they still around. Um, to your grandfathers, you know. Sons, soon to be fathers, sons that will be fathers in the future. Happy Father's Day to y'all too. So hopefully we're leaving, you know, a good footprint for you all to follow. So that way you, you won't be making these excuses. And we could be thinking about, we gotta be thinking about legacy thinking. That's all I see right now. I'm seeing people <clears throat> like our president, 
his son, his son gonna be different than a lot of these other people's sons. Cause if we keep making these excuses and let it trickle down to our offspring, guess what? We haven't made any progress. Mm -hmm. We haven't made progress. So it's up to the male. So we're gonna talk about credit. I'm gonna go to the whiteboard today. You know, I love teaching class. So we're gonna go to the whiteboard. We're gonna talk about credit. I'm gonna look, I'm gonna write this down as if I was gonna forget. Credit. Some people say put a K at the end. Credit. <laughs> <laughs> We're going, to, we're, going to talk about, What's your credit we're going to talk about your credit score. <laughs> your credit score. Look, I'm about to say story. We're going to talk about your credit score. We're going to talk about some credit, and we're going to talk about the five components. Very important to know the five components because it's just like, it's like playing chess. If you're playing chess and you don't know the pieces, if you don't know how the rook moves, if you don't know how the knight moves, if you don't know how the bishop moves, if you don't know how to set the board, you are out. You out the game. Oh, we, if you feel like you ain't playing chess, I'll break it down to something even simpler that everybody can understand. Checkers. No, dodgeball. Mm. Right? Y'all remember you playing dodgeball? And you trying to hit the joke upside the head with the ball? Like real hard, and then just say we playing dodgeball. Even in dodgeball, hey, we play we the way we used to play wasn't no out of bounds. <laughs> some people, man. some people said they was out of bounds, and we still would hit them with the ball because we like it wasn't no out of bounds, right? It's the same thing. We you have to know the five components of a credit score because what it does for you is this. It gives you the ability to change your credit in an instant. In an instant. If you know the difference between utilization and new credit, if you know the difference between payment history and credit age, you can change your credit score in an instant. Like, bah! You ain't got to be waiting. You ain't got to be standing behind something. You don't have to be losing all these different... And there's opportunities everywhere. Just based on that one fact, how strong is your credit? And if your credit is not strong, guess what? What we what we start off the show talking about? This is a safe environment. So what if your credit is not strong? Guess what? Get it strong. Work on getting it strong. Don't just week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out. My credit ain't strong. Okay. Okay, you told me that last year. Let's get let's get it. Let's work on it then. If you got something that you need to work on, the first step is, I'm going to give you this before I even get to the board. The first step is, do this. Hey, can you put this in the chat? Go to annual. Hold on for a second, let me get that. Annual. Annual. Almost there. Where am I? Annualcreditreport.com. By law, you get a free credit report, you can get that every year. Annual. And the reason they say annual, that means annual. That means every year, like getting a physical. Annualcreditreport.com. I like annualcreditreport.com because you can go into annualcreditreport.com, annualcreditreport.com. You can go into annualcreditreport.com and get a copy of all three of your credit reports, mm -hmm. all three, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. Boom, boom, boom. You can go in and get all three and get your scores for all three for free. I think they charge $7 for your score. So I ain't gonna lie. I think they charge like $7 for your score. But so what? You, you spend $7 on a little sausage sandwich, there right? You go. So instead of buying a sausage sandwich, spend $7 on your credit score. Because it's Father's Day weekend, and we men, right? And we about provision. So go to annualcreditreport.com, pull your credit, pull it, and look at it. Mm -hmm. Put like, pull it and open. It's it's gonna come and like you might have. I don't know how much credit you got. You might have one page of credit. You might have a hundred pages. It don't matter. Pull your credit report, print it out, and look at it. Even
even if you don't know how to read it, just look at it. Take and you look at it long enough, huh? Take a picture of it. Take a, yeah, take a picture of it. You got a smartphone. Take a picture of it. And then if you want to take a picture of it, just sit down and read it. If you sit down and look at it long enough, you'll start to understand, like, oh, this means you had a, oh, I was late. Oh, this what this means. Oh, okay. Oh, derogatory. Oh. Oh, that's what that means. Public record. Oh, that's what that means. 60 day. Oh, that's what that means. Pull your credit report and just look at it. Just stare at it. You know, marinate on it. Like sometimes when you cook food, you have to marinate it, right? Marinate on that god darn thing, man. Just keep looking at it until you get Just keep looking at it till you figure it out. And then if you if you can't figure it out, if you if you done looked at it and you done tried and you I, I don't like reading credit reports. Right? Okay. Like some people say, I don't like reading it. Okay. I'm gonna do you one better. I'm gonna do you like we call it sometimes. I'm gonna give you a solid. If you don't like reading credit reports, this is what you can do. Right? Info, let me see which email I need to give you. No. Daily bread radio show. Daily bread radio show at yahoo.com. Daily bread radio show at yahoo.com just shoot me an email say hey bro pull this credit report I ain't getting it I don't understand it L lose the pride because with me I ain't gonna come on here and blast you like oh man old boy called me now I may come on and use it as an example but I always I'm gonna always change the names to protect the innocent notice I said change the names to protect the innocent but I ain't even say no names, right? So we got to get to the point where we, we're not so sensitive, especially men, right? We got to get to the point where we, we so, we stop being so sensitive about stuff that's, man, it's important. Don't be sensitive. It's like, like we talked about, like if you, <laughs> if you got a hammer too. <laughs> If you got a hammer toe, that's fine. That's fine. But we got to get to the point where we stop being so sensitive. You know what I'm saying, man? As men, we can be sensitive sometimes. And I'm like, man, that's for... I don't know where I'm going there. But anyway, that's for another species other than a male, right? Don't be so sensitive. Say, man, hey, bro, I don't understand. Because guess what? When you don't understand something and you start to learn, you start to study it, guess what? You get better at it. So don't use that excuse like, I don't understand it. Pull your credit report, look at it, and if you don't understand something, I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you something to take away the excuse. Daily Bread Radio Show at Yahoo.com. Just hit me up. Say, hey, man, I, I don't understand it. Hey, man, let's go over this. We Hey. We jump on a Zoom, we pull it up, I look at your, I look at your computer, or you can have me pull it up, however you want to do it, right? And then we'll talk about it, and then guess what? You go off and get better with it, and you'll practice. It's people that got stuff on their credit that could be off tomorrow, but they're afraid to look at it. It's like, it's like opening, I don't know what, Pandora's box or something, I don't know what it is. But it's keeping our economy behind. It's keeping us from having access to stuff. So instead of people discriminating against you, you know what they say? What's your credit score? Mm. Oh, oh, your credit score. Oh, you got bad credit. What's bad credit? You know, they say that, ah, you got bad credit. So, and, but guess what? You can change that. And the, and the reason they're doing that is to keep you out. I don't want you to have access to capital. I don't want you to have access to these type of loans because guess what? You may figure out how to make more money than I can make. So we're going to set the credit limit because we know millions of people not even looking at their credit. Millions of people don't even know how to read a credit report. Why? Because they don't teach. Where do they teach how to read a credit report at? They don't. They don't. Most people don't even pull their own credit. Most people only see their credit when they want something. I want a car, I want a house, I want to buy some new furniture. And they say, oh, we got to run your credit. And you say, ooh, 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 I 
know, it's going to hope this turn out good, but you don't know how it's going to turn out as opposed to you pulling your own credit. So that's what today we're going to talk about credit today. And I'm going to break some things down for you because it's, it's Father's Day weekend. So before I go to the board, number to the show, 678-381-1973. 678-381-1973. I can't, man. I can't read them. Cop, what they? Yeah. Man, you supposed to be the side kick, man. What? What's the comments say, man? What the people happy, saying, bro? Happy Father's Day. Oh, Happy Father's Day. For sure. For sure. For sure. For sure. For Corey, sure. Corey West said, check it in. Haven't been in a while. Hey, Corey bro. West. Come on, man. Come on, Coco. Come on. Come on, man. You, you, you supposed to be checking every week, bro. You, you part of the team. You, you helping this thing move forward. And it's funny that you checked in today because I was just thinking about you. So I'm gonna have to hit you with some of that, but um, I'm gonna go to the board in a second. But I'm I gotta lay something on y'all because this is for the um, this is for the listening audience, right? So I got something for you all, and I'll post it. But you all gonna be the first to hear about it. And I talked about this last week, but I'm I'm gonna keep talking about it, right? Because I think that this card that I have in my hand, this this card right here. Is, is gonna give us, and I know y'all might not be able to see, that's small, but it's a business card, and I'm gonna read it to you. So don't worry about what it say, I'm gonna tell you what it say, right? It says, J period, L, E-L-L-E, capital, J-L capital, right? Joaquin Thompson Senior Loan Officer, 470-322-5122, info, info at, J E L L E capital.com. That's what this card says. What does that mean? That means this. I just got approved after I've been working on this for a year, over a year. Probably been a year and some change. I have access to capital. I have access, I have to, I have in my phone. Listen to what I'm saying to you. Now we're gonna get serious, right? Listen to what I'm saying to you. And you have to, when I, when I share things with you, I want you to just sit back and marinate on this. How many people do you know have, have direct, listen to what I'm saying to you, have direct access to an underwriter? I didn't say to another loan officer that works for a mortgage company. I said have direct access to an underwriter group or a group of underwriters. Direct access. What does direct access mean? That means I pick up the phone, call them, Say, hey, his score is this. He's been on his job this amount of time. This is what he's looking at. Is it a go? Is it a no-go? And they break down the whole thing. What you need to do, what you don't need to do, what you can, what you can't do. Blah, blah, blah. They give you the whole thing. But guess what they're giving you? They're giving you the keys to getting approval on the loan. And where can I do the mortgages at? I can do the mortgages in 44 states. So if you're listening to this broadcast and you live in one of them 44 states, I could do I could do a mortgage for you. Why is this important? This is important for me to say this on this show tonight for this reason. You may be saying, I don't need a mortgage. Right? I'm already in my house or I'm not looking to buy a house. But guess what? You know people that need a mortgage. You know people that's talking about getting a refinance. You know people that their kids may be getting ready to get a mortgage. So you got the realtor, but before most, most states now, before they will even show you a house, the first question that they're going to ask you is, do you have a pre-qual letter? Are you pre-qualified? Are you pre-approved? JL Capital, just reach out to them. 470-322-5122. Put that in the, put that in the box, right? Yeah. And the reason, what you say? You got a question? No, what you got? You said you a little box, Yeah, 470-470-322-5122. Oh, mm -hmm. That is extremely important. 470-322-5122. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And you all book that in your phone. Because you may have a question about a mortgage. You may be, oh, man, I, I, I'm, I'm getting ready to buy one. I want to buy one in two years from now. I'm getting ready to sell this house and get it to another house. We got to do business with each other. I already know this is going to be big. It's not only going to be big for me, it's going to be big for my community. I'm talking about Duval County. I'm talking about all over the state of Florida. I'm talking about Atlanta. I'm talking about D.C. I'm talking Maryland. I'm talking New York, New Jersey, Philly. Bro, I'm, I'm 
all, I'm going to be all over with this. And the reason, the reason is this. We traditionally, historically, we have not had access to capital. Nor have we had access to somebody that can tell you exactly what you need. This is like having a, man, this is like taking a test and somebody saying, I got the answer key. Bro, I'm your brother. I got the answer key. And here's the thing that we do at our, at our company that's different than other companies. Most companies you go to and you say you want to get a pre-approval or a pre-qualification letter, first thing that they do is what? Pull your credit. First thing. The first thing they're going to do is pull your credit, right? Because a lot of lenders say they need to pull your credit to see if you can get pre-approved. We don't even do that. We got a list of items. We got seven items that you need to have, and everybody has these for the most part. And if you don't, then we need to we have a conversation about that, and I'll be open and upfront and transparent with you. But most people have these. You give me these seven components, right? I shoot them over to the underwriter. She shoots you over a pre-qualification letter, pre-approval letter. You go, we find you a house. As long as you're not above whatever threshold that underwriter come back with, like, oh, you hit 250. Don't go out and get a $300,000 house because she said, or he said, 250. Anything at 250 and below, you are good. You are good. 200 and below. Some people say, well, 150 and below. It could be 100 and below. I had one of my partners call me today about a house. $35,000. I said, is the house? He said, man, people are just living in the house. $35,000. With a thirty-five thousand, what, what's better, renting or buying a thirty-five thousand dollar house? That's what I'm talking about. You got, you got, well, you got access. You got keys to the kingdom, and I'm giving them to you. So if you know somebody with a mortgage, if you know somebody looking for a mortgage, if you know they got a mortgage question, call me, text me. You can go. Oh, and the website. Put the website in there. You can go to J E. LLEcapital.com. And you'll see everything that I can offer. All the different loans, all the products. You'll see all of that. You'll see everything. Go to the website, right? JLCapital.com. It's Father's Day. JLCapital.com. Just go check out the website. The website is funky. The email is funky. Info at jlcapital.com. I have a question. I have a, you can fill out the app right online. It's just a little app. It ain't going to be nothing like social security number, none of that. You can fill out an app right online because they ain't going to ask you for your social security number because we don't pull credit. We pull credit when you sign a contract to buy a piece of property. Not before. Reason being, a lot of these companies are pulling people's credit and then the person may decide they don't want to, they not buying right then. Guess what? You still got an inquiry. You still got a, you got an inquiry that you ain't even need to have on your credit. We can give you a pre-qual. You go out and look at a house or this house or you and your, you know, your wife or your, your spouse or your partner, whoever, or you just, you individually say, you know what? Now I'm going to wait, save some more money to buy what I really want. We ain't even, we're not going to pull your credit. Or you may be looking to buy your first piece of investment property. Because you got to invest, because we do what? We men. We have to provide. We have to get provision for our kids and our kids' kids so they can eat. Right? So now you got now you have your own personal mortgage person. You got your own, and you know it ain't going to be nothing shady. It ain't going to be no, you know, nothing underhanded. That's, that's 90% of the game right there. Somebody you can trust. Somebody you can feel free referring people to. Bro, and we can do business together. You might see something like, oh, I want to get this house. We can partner on some deals. We can, bro, we got it. We got access to capital. We got access to capital, right? This ain't Wells Fargo. And if you don't think the mortgage game is big, why do you think you see every NBA game? Who's the sponsor of the NBA? Rocket Mortgage. Somebody asked me the other day, like, oh, so where's your office at? I said, no, I'm online. I'm just like Rocket Mortgage. Go to the website, fill out the app. No, it ain't no, it ain't no office to come to. We don't need no office to come to. I need to get your information, run it through underwriting, 
and we need to figure out what kind of product we can put you in. FHA, VA, conventional, jumbo, we, we got all of that. We have all of the above. So make sure you go to JL Capital and send that to your friends and let people know, friends, family, whomever. So before I go to the point, let me hit you with the, um, the Father's Day edition of the Book of the Week. Now, fathers, these three books I'm getting ready to share with you today. I know you're probably getting a bunch of stuff for Father's Day, you know. Um, but if you like me, if somebody asks you, like, hey, what do you want for Father's Day? Let me, get, let me give you some stuff that you can hit them with. Tell them I want to get a copy of The Richest Man in Babylon. Cost you about nine bucks, right? But the richest man in Babylon tells you what? It tells you the seven cures for a lean purse. It tells you to meet the goddess of good luck. It tells you the five laws of gold. It tells you the gold lender of Babylon. It tells you the walls of Babylon. It tells you about the camel trader of Babylon, the clay tablets from Babylon, and the luckiest man in Babylon. Mm. In Babylon. Now, this is the kind of book what I call a guarantee book. You can just throw up, you can just throw up through it. So all you gotta do is do like this, and wherever I stop, the third cure, the gold we may retain from our earnings is but a start. The earnings it will make shall build our fortunes. Did you hear what I just said? Say it again. God damn. Say it again. Make sure they hear you. It's Father's Day, bro. Listen to what I'm saying to you. I just hit you with this a couple weeks ago with Marcus. Marcus Garvey said the same exact thing. Listen to what I'm saying to you. The third cure for a lean purse. Make thy gold multiply. That's the title of the third cure. Listen to what he says. The gold we may retain from our earnings, quote unquote, the money, the money, so let me change it like they do in church. Let me change it so that way everybody understands what I'm saying. The money we retain from our paycheck is but the start. The money it will make shall build our fortunes. That means you have to make it and make it multiply. You have to make it and then make it multiply. Not just earn a dollar, you got to make that dollar turn into two. And then two turn into four. I'm going to hit y'all, I'm going to make myself a note. I'm going to hit y'all with that tonight too. Rule of 72. Remind me if I don't hit it, rule of 72. We only got 11 minutes, so I'm going to give it to you real quick. Tell them you want to get a copy of The Richest Man in Babylon. Ten bucks. That's a perfect Father's Day gift. The next book, guaranteed book. This, just the title alone, I'm not even going to thumb through this one. Just the title alone, As a Man Thinking, by James Allen. As a Man Thinking. Now this book, this book is so deep. You, you have to read this book sitting down, because this book is deep. It gives you a series, <clears throat> it gives you a series of, I guess you would say excerpts, to read on a daily basis, in the morning and at night. In the morning and at night. Now let me show you what the difference is. This again, this is a guaranteed book. So if you look for something good to get your your fathers for Father's Day, as a man thinking. This book costs three dollars and ninety-five cents. Now I'm gonna give you three dollars and ninety-five cents. I'm gonna show you something real quick. Listen to this. Calmness of mind is one of the beautiful jewels of wisdom. A man becomes calm in the measure that he understands himself as a thought evolved being, and as he develops a right understanding and sees more and more clearly the internal relations of things by the action of cause and effect. He ceases to fret and fume and worry and grieve and remains poised, steadfast, and serene. That's worth $3.95 right there for the father in your life. That's the second one. Third one, millionaire real estate investor. I got a post-it note on the front of this. Millionaire real estate investor. Now this book, $20. $21.95 to be exact. Probably cheaper than that. You can pick it up on Amazon. Millionaire real estate investor. Why is this important? Look who this, this book was written by. Gary Keller. 
Do you know who Keller is? Mm-hmm. You know who Gary Keller is? I heard of him before. Yeah, you hear about it every day. Yeah. Keller Williams. Oh. Keller Williams. This is the guy that started Keller Williams. And he's breaking down the real estate game from beginning to end. Mm. From beginning, you have, listen. This is a guarantee book. Look what he showed. He showed you if you took a penny. This is in his book. If you took a penny and let a penny double every day for 30 days, every day, just let it double every day for 30 days, how much would you have at the end of 30 days? If you took one penny and just let it double every day for 30 days. I can do that. Give me a, give me a pen. I'll tell you what. You can't do that, man. It's too big. This, this math too big for you, man. This give ain't me a pen. This ain't kidding. This ain't. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. I, I, what did I say? Kindergarten? Yeah, give me a pen, man. Go ahead, man. You ain't going to be able to figure this out, man. We ain't got time for that, man. You ain't going to be able to figure this number out. Watch that. But this just shows you the power of, of having access to stuff. Get this for your get this for your fathers for Father's Day. If you took a penny, right? If you took one penny and multiplied it every day for 30 days, like a penny, then the next day you got two cent, then you got four cent, then you got eight. You did that all the way up for 30 days. You know how much you would have? I'm getting there. You getting there? Getting there. All right, man, we running out of time. Why not get there before you, before you but I'm going to get there. All right. Well, I'm, I'm going to go and give you, the, like I said, I got the keys to the, the answers to the test. So it's 10 million, man. No. See? That's why I love, see, that's the thing about knowledge. Nah. See, when somebody show you something, right? Somebody shows you something, if you haven't been exposed to it, what do we say? No, no way. Yeah, wait, you just haven't been exposed. I'm exposing you to something. Yeah, way, 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 right? Way, way. Why is that important? Because people that have been exposed, guess what? They're doing it. They are doing it. They're making better personal finance decisions than other people that haven't been exposed. Here's another quick story. I'm gonna, we only got seven minutes, so I ain't gonna take you over to the whiteboard. But I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you the same information that I was gonna give you at the whiteboard, and we'll take it home. Met a guy recently, and this is what he said to me. Father owned a car lot. Guy came to the car lot and said he wanted to buy this truck. And he asked. He asked the guy, how much are the payments for this truck? And the guy said, now keep in mind, this was like in the 50s. Late 50s, early 60s. So the guy said, the truck note is $100 a month. And the guy responded, $100 a month? For this? That's too much. I, that's too much. Wow. That's just that's outrageous. $100? He said he went on and on. He said he's, his dad was peeling the apple, and he didn't even look up. He just kept peeling the apple. So the guy kept going on and on. Hundred dollars? That's too. Uh. He said, "Okay." He said, uh, "Do you have a job?" He said, "Yeah, I work down at the, at the plant." He said, "Okay." He said, "How about this? How about I do this for you? Could you pay twenty five dollars a week?" Oh yeah, I could do twenty. Oh. Oh, that'd be perfect. Perfect. That'd be perfect. I could definitely do twenty-five dollars a week. I could definitely do that. I could definitely do that. Right? I, I, yeah. He said, "Dad never looked up. He just kept peeling out." He said, "Okay, so every Friday I want you to come see my wife over there and give her the twenty-five dollars." He said, "You can take that truck now." He said the guy ran off, and my friend he said he went up to his dad. He was all he said, "What?" Why didn't he get that? Why, why you ain't tell him? Why? He said, the moral of the story is this. Now, this is a father speaking to a son. He said, the moral of the story is this. I don't ever want you to be the person that don't understand the difference between $100 a month and $25 a week. Mm-hmm. Now, the reason I'm sharing that with you is this. I was talking about earlier. I started this mortgage company. I'm already starting to see that already. Just the questions that I'm getting from people about credit, about down payments, 
about how much house they can buy. I'm starting to see that already where I'm saying like, uh, that's pretty much the same thing. Pretty much, right? Because one or two percent here or there, or three percent, it's the same money. You just splitting hairs. But people, sometimes we get into a whole big back and forth about stuff that it, it don't really amount to anything. So we got four minutes left, and in these four minutes, I'm gonna share something with you about credit. And this is for Father's Day. I didn't get a chance to get to the board, but I'm gonna give it to you, right? I'm gonna give it to you like it's off the dome. And I want you to write this down, and if you, not at a place where you can write it down, go back, look at the replay, and then go back and write it down, right? Number one, payment history. And next to payment history, I want you to write 35%. Number two, credit usage, or some people call it utilization. So I want you to write utilization, because I'm not at the whiteboard, so I'm, we're gonna do it virtually. Write utilization, and write 30% next to it. The next one, credit age. So you wanna write credit age, and then next to that, you wanna write 15%, right? And then after that, you wanna put new credit, right? Write new credit, and then write 10%, right? And then the last one, you want to put credit mix, 10%, 35 and 30 is 65, just the first two, 35 and 30 is 65, 65% of your credit score is what? Payment history and utilization, right? Add another 15, that's 80%, 80% of your credit score, payment history, utilization, and credit age, right? Now, if you had a low credit score and your utilization was high, I could look at your credit and say, you know what, you need to pay, you got a $500 credit card and you and your balance is 490. You could pay 490 on that credit card and your score shoot up, especially if that's the only card that you have. And a lot of times people don't have a lot of credit cards. They have one or two small credit cards, but they have used the utilization up. Stop applying for stuff. New credit. Every time you get a new account, bring your score down. You can just stop opening a new account and your score go up, right? That's pretty easy. And the first one, 35%, just if you haven't been doing it, start doing it. Pay all your bills on time. And I'm going to give you a quick trick to do that. If you owe a bill, say your bill is whatever. It could be $100, it could be $25. You get paid twice a month, every other week, just take that bill, cut it in half, and every time you get paid, 25, 25, 50, 50. If you do it like that and start it off with you already a payment ahead, a half of a payment ahead, you'll never be late. Matter of fact, you have a credit. I just went down to the, how many people you know went and picked up a credit? Mm. I went and picked up a check from the gas company. So you paid too much. Because I ran this system for a whole year, and it was like, oh, you had an overage. That's credit. And the last two, those two 10%, credit mix and credit and new credit, right? New credit and credit mix. Credit mix is you can't just have all installment loans. You can't have all just revolving credit. You got to have a mix because they want to see that you can manage money at different levels. Those are the five components of a credit score. Everybody, every adult should know that. And you should know it the same way that I just said it. So that way when you get into a situation and you need to improve your credit, you know the five components, you can pull your own credit, you can look at it, read it, and if all else fails, Daily Bread Radio Show at Yahoo.com. Hey man, what's this mean? And I'll give it to you for free on the strength. We're at the top of the hour. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers that have already, they, they've already passed. These are ancestors, you know, fathers, grandfathers, great-great-grandfathers, the men that we looked up to, the men that we aspire to be, the men that one day we're going to turn into if we are blessed to live long enough. But Father's Day, this is our day, so make sure you, hey, go in on them, because you know on Mother's Day, boy, you be, so I want you to do just like they do, be sitting around waiting like, <laughs> I want you to wake up. Like, hey, let's go to church. <laughs> and, when you, and when you get out of church, you be looking around like, where are we going to eat? <laughs> where my gifts? 
<laughs> what about? Hey, don't ask your daddy to cook on the grill. Hey, don't, hey, don't, hey, don't be, uh-uh. Nah, don't, don't be cooking. Don't ask your daddy to cook on the grill. Hey, man, don't be cooking on the grill. Be sitting back. Just like, hey, where you going to eat? Like, hey, we going, hey, we ain't doing no Golden Corral. Uh-uh. We doing uh, Bones, Chops, Roof Chris, you know, Atlanta Steakhouse. We, hey, we, hey, it's Father's Day. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I want you to do the same thing. Don't get in your feelings. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, I wish all of the fathers a happy Father's Day. Those. You know, take care of your people. Because, you know, hey, it ain't, it's, it's nothing. And I'm going to end the show with this. It's nothing in life. It's nothing in life like a real father. Period. Drop the mic. Nothing. And I, and I hey, it, it ain't nothing like mama. So don't get it twisted. But it's nothing in life like a real father. Y'all have a great week. I appreciate y'all tuning in. Episode 105. We got the TV show coming soon. It's in edit. Edit mode. We editing the TV show. We're going to pop that off. So we'll be on something big probably this time next year. Uh, HBO, Showtime. I'm shopping it everywhere. I'm like, hey, y'all need to put this on. This brother doing this thing. Y'all need. We need to talk about this on a, on a national level. We need to talk. We need to talk about this. So, uh, and and definitely, if you need a mortgage, if you know somebody need a mortgage, if you're thinking about somebody need a mortgage, go to j e l l e capital dot com. J l capital dot com. Hey, and you see everything there. Mortgage game. You got access to the mortgage man. All right. So y'all have a good week. Love y'all. Couldn't do it without y'all. Hey. Turn the mic off. Won't be misled. The daily bread. You can. Yo, cut a step for him, man. Cut a step for him. Cut a step for him. Yo, Lord. <laughs> Let me turn this off, Lord Jesus. <laughs>